Okay, so my name is Saar, um, and I'll just start um, with a riddle. Props to Ben Dean for, uh, he, uh, he started this riddle in his uh, lightning talk in C++ now uh, 17. The challenge is to write a C++ program with the longest sequence of keywords and still have a valid program, okay? Um, which is like sounds easy at first, right? You just you do like long, 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 long int, right? So if you try this in GCC, it tells you that. Can you see that? One of the nicest error messages there are. Long, long, long is too long for GCC. <laughs> um, so that doesn't work. Um, we're going to have to be a little more creative. Uh, the solution he gave includes 11 keywords in sequence. No uh, operators, no nothing. It goes like this, static. You want to want, want guess? Okay, inline. Thread local. Const expert, that's right. Const volatile. Unsigned long, long int. Last one is kind of surprising, bit and. <laughs> bit and is, is like a keyword for, um, for keywords that don't have the ampersand operator. It means the same thing. Uh, so if you define a reference there, you can use um, bit and to, like it's a reference to this <laughs> weird int. Um, so yeah, um, but then he said, um, the real answer was alf null. Why is that? You can use, well, you can use an unbounded amount of keywords, actually. You just use size of as many times as you like. <laughs> Size of, size of, size of, size of, size uh, There's also another solution to this. You can just do, 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 why, 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 why. Uh, so it's a very productive kind of um, solution. So it's, it's, it's nice, but he said, um, he said out of null, right? That's like an infinite amount of, of, of uh, keywords. But what you in practice can get from here is, is just an unbounded amount of keywords. So I set out to find, what, can you have a C++ program with an infinite amount of keywords? Not an unbounded one, but an infinite amount of, keyboard, of keywords. Um, let's break this down. Uh, we're gonna, does an infinite C++ program exist? Does, we're gonna try and answer this question. Uh, and one is enough, infinite, contains an infinite amount of characters, okay? That's what I mean by infinite. C++, as defined by the standard. Program, that's a good question. What, what is a program, anyway? Uh, exists in the theoretical sense, okay? I'm not expecting, I'm not gonna show you the program itself. Um, okay, so what is C++? It's kind of a philosophical thing. Well, it's, an, it's kind of an abstract term, but it's well-defined, uh, mostly, in the standard. Um, which, uh, as you might not know, it's currently 1,400 pages long. Um, it's a finite number of, uh, the standard is, in, is finite, uh, just barely though. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, the document defines C++ as you can see here. Um, uh, we don't care about the actual implementation here as we are just here to, to find out if uh, an infinite program exists in, the, in this abstract definition of C++. So what is a program? Um, can a program be infinite? That's like a weird question. What is the definition of a program? Well, let me Google that for you, and you get uh, the Wikipedia article for a program which says, um, program is a collection of instructions that performs, that performs a specific task when executed by a computer. Well, that's kind of unclear if it can be infinite or not. Um, but like checking Wikipedia for formal definitions is not uh, recommended. So let's see what the standard has to say about this. So um, here you have what is a C++ program. Um, uh, the C++ program constructed according to the syntax rule, diagnostic, diagnosable semantic rules, and the one definition rule. Um, in any, any case, they use the word program here as is. They don't define what a program actually is. So what is a program? If you check out um, this part of the standard, you, you get uh, references to other standards that this standard depend on. For example, this 
standard, ISO IEC 2382, which defines vocabulary for information technology, which is nice. There's like a standard for common terms in computer science. So maybe this one defines what a program actually is. And I opened this one, this standard up, and found the definition of a program. Syntactic unit that conforms to the rules of a particular programming language. So what is a programming language? Artificial language for expressing programs. Uh, yeah, so it's somewhat cyclic. But we do have syntactic unit over here, which is not defined anywhere in this standard. Um, nor is syntax defined. So what, what I'm, still, I'm still not sure what a program is. Um, let's see what the syntactic unit is. Let's check Wikipedia. Uh, they say um, syntax, anything to do with formal languages. Uh, formal language uh, uh, is a set of words over an alphabet. Um, and the word is a finite sequence of letters. Well, that's a bummer, right? Um, yeah. So, but Wikipedia can be trusted, right? We, we've established that. Um, what does the st standard have to say about this? Okay, so I found this. A program consists of one or more translation units linked together, okay? One or more, well, Alice Null is more than one, right? So maybe we have, we have something to go here. So what's a translation unit? Uh, it consists of a sequence of declarations. There is like a, a declaration sequence, just a declaration, or another, just more declarations. Um, well, it seems from this like uh, thing over here that the number of declarations must be bounded, right? Because you can only produce one more each time. Um, so each declaration, each translation unit is finite. But, can you have infinite translation units, though? Interesting. The translation units, uh, according to the standards, have to be linked together, right? Linked together. Um, over here, that's a program. But there's no mention of a specific linking phase. That's, they just have to be linked together. There's no like action of linking them together. They just have to be linked together. Um, and the implementation must behave as if uh, when they describe the phases of, uh, the, uh, of the cr creating a program, they say they must behave as if these separate phases occur, but they don't, they don't actually have to perform them separately. Um, so yeah, basically uh, from this I conclude, I conclude that the standard does allow infinite translation units to exist if you find a way to get them linked together. But this is less interesting. What we actually would want is one translation unit with infinite uh, text. That's more interesting, actually. Um, so during parsing, um, the standard says that the text of your program is kept in source files, OK? So that would, would probably indicate that the source files themselves are uh, finite, right? Because files are finite things, right? Well, are they? Let's see what the standards say about files. A file is an object within a file system, and a file system is a collection of files. So actually, there's, there's no uh, thing here in the standard that says that files must be finite. Um, yeah, but uh, the, 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 the source files are actually uh, constructed using um, uh, tokens, as we all know. Um, but there's this specific clause here that says white space characters separating tokens are no longer, longer significant at one point. Okay? So basically, um, at some point during parsing, the, the implementation is, is dropping all the white space there is. So, so theoretically, you could have um, you could have a program with infinite white space in the middle of it. So, what, but why is this interesting? Okay, it's not part of the any like syntax or anything, but you could have a program with uh, infinite amount of white space. Why is this interesting? Why not just you can have a program and stick infinite new lines, but it won't be any anything interesting, right? 
Why is this interesting? Let's talk about ordinals. So infinite ordinals, like a generalization of natural numbers, if you have like the numbers one, two, three, four, five to infinity, and then you take all these infinite numbers and take one element after them, the index of that, el that last element is called uh, omega. And basically, um, you can have like sequences where it's like infinitely many things, then another, then more things after that. These, these sequences are called trans transfinite sequences. The question is, is this valid C++? If, if it is, you can have something like this, int main, start main, do infinitely many new lines, then have std c out and print out the line number. Okay? What would happen with such a thing? Um, okay, let's see if this, is, if this works. What is underscore underscore line, though? The presumed line number within the current source file of the current source line. An integer literal. What is an integer literal? Well, it's one of the integer literals, uh, unsurprisingly. Um, there is no integer literal that represents omega. So this won't work. What if it was a float literal, though? Floats can have infinite values, right? Uh, but still no, because there's no like literal for infinite. You have to like divide zero by itself or something, or divide uh, one over zero. So there's no float literal as well. But there's this presumed thing over there, right? This is kind of uh, suspicious. What, is, what does it mean, the presumed line number? So if we check the definition of presumed, um, that's suppose that something is, is the case based on the basis of probability. Uh, the probability that the line number is zero is exactly zero in this case of an infinite program. <laughs> So like saying that the program line number over there is zero is still not, it's, it's, like we can't say that we've decided this on the basis of probability, basically. Um, but here the presumed line number is, can be updated using hashtag line. So basically if we write in main, infinite, infinitely many new lines, um, and then do hashtag line one, backslash n, then use std c out and print out uh, underscore underscore line underscore underscore. Um, this would work according to the standard, but it does not have any semantic meaning. Um, so yes, but this also this clause over here that says in the informative part of the standard, which we'll get to in a minute, that says because computers are finite, C++ implementations can propose some kind of limits on your program, right? Um, one, one thing is that this clause is like an informative clause. It's not strictly speaking binding. It's not, you don't have to follow this because it's like, it's, uh, it's uh, supposed to explain things, not like the strict rules. And in fact, the number of translation units is not listed as one of the things that you could limit uh, in this way. So basically, you can do infinitely many translation units, but there's like also this one or others. Uh, so they actually did cover themselves up themselves up here. So the verdict. Uh, a program with infinite translation units can be legal uh, if you allow, and uh, as for an infinite translation unit, if you allow, tra allow transfinite files, um, it can be legal, but will not have any, any semantic, interesting semantic meaning. Uh, if you don't allow them, uh, it depends on whether you're using C++ 03 or 11. Uh, C++11 actually allowed infinite files, actually, because in C++03 said, if a source file that is not empty does not end in a new line character, something, something, thumbs, something, the behavior is undefined, okay? So in, in, uh, in particular, if it does not end at all, <laughs> it, the behavior is undefined. And in C++11, they changed that, that uh, if it is not empty and does not end in a new line character, you have to behave as if uh, a new new line character was appended. So that's fine. So yeah, use C++11. That's the takeout from all. Uh, that's it. Thanks for listening.